So what does it actually mean to take the derivative? To begin to answer this, let's start by considering the path of a ball dropped to earth, 10 metres off the ground. We'll graph the fall of the ball as it drops. The question then is what velocity did the ball travel at? Your first idea might be to say that the velocity is equal to the change in distance divided by the change in time of the ball. So the final distance of the ball from earth is 0, subtract the initial distance which is 10. Now for the time, the final time is 3, subtract the initial time which is 0. The only problem with this solution is that it's completely wrong, because our ball wasn't travelling at a constant speed as it fell to earth. In fact, our speed corresponds to the average speed of the ball across the whole journey, which would mean that it travelled according to this line. We can clearly see the difference by simulating a ball across each path. Both balls arrive at the same time, but have very different speeds across the overall journey. So, how do we solve this? Well, to start with, let's see what happens if we zoom in on our curve. Notice that when we zoom in, our curve looks like a line. From this, let's consider what happens if we move the two points we put into our velocity equation closer together. You can see that as the points get closer, they become a better and better approximation of the speed of our curve at any given point. So then, to get the velocity at a given point, we need to put our points as close together as possible, so that they cannot be any closer. Let's try and apply our plan to a simpler curve, the parabola f of x equals x squared. Firstly, let's put two points on the curve and draw out a triangle between them. The bottom of our triangle corresponds to the difference in x value between them, and the right side of our triangle corresponds to the difference in y values. Since our velocity is going to change as our points change, let's call it the function v of x and set it equal to the change in v divided by the change in x. Next we need to work out what delta x and delta y are equal to. Let's start with delta x. Let's call the x coordinate that we start with x, and the difference between our two x coordinates the difference of x, or dx. By changing dx we can make our approximations of the velocity more or less precise. The eventual aim is to set dx equal to 0 in order to get an answer to the problem at any given point instead of an approximation. We can see that our x coordinate is x plus dx, therefore delta x is equal to x plus dx, subtract x, we can simplify this down to just dx. Next let's look at delta y. To find y from x we can use the equation f of x. So our starting coordinate is simply f of our starting x coordinate, or f of x. Similarly, our final coordinate is f of x plus dx, therefore delta y is equal to f of x plus dx, subtract f of x. Now let's put this back into our equation for the velocity and start simplifying. As f of x equals x squared, we replace f of x by squaring the value we supply it, multiply out our bracket, subtract like terms, and divide through by dx. This leaves us with v of x equals 2x plus dx, so to finish we set dx equal to 0, and find the exact rate of change of our curve is 2x. This is what it means to differentiate a function.